lots of folks here. Um, hi, Christy. I haven't talked to you for a while. Uh, so if you would just, and we really want to encourage you to have your screens on, particularly um, when we go, we're going to be going into breakout rooms and you'll need to see each other there. So, um, you know, you won't find, and it's just nice at the beginning to have your, your video on, but you can see your face and remember who you are. Okay, we ready to start? Go ahead to the next slide. Great. Good afternoon, everyone on the East Coast, and good morning, everyone on the West Coast. Uh, we wanted to welcome you to this first network weaving workshop um, hosted by the Johns Hopkins Center for a Livable Future. My name is Rachel Santo, and I'm a senior research program coordinator here at the center um, as part of the Food Policy Networks Project. And Karen Basarab, a program officer, is also joining from her computer. Uh, Karen, you could give a wave. Uh, and Ann Palmer, our program director, will be joining the, the call shortly. This series of virtual workshops will provide a chance to explore many different aspects of network approaches. We'll be discussing topics like governance and structure, engaging network participants, developing leadership in your network, and communications for engaging participants. Before we begin, I just wanted to give a brief explanation of who we are. So the Center for a Livable Future is an interdisciplinary center located at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Our work focuses on the intersection of diet, the environment, food production, and public health. The Food Policy Networks Project is one of our uh, center's projects. The goal of FPN is to build the capacity of food system stakeholders to reform local, state, regional, and tribal food systems through effective public policy. We do that through training, sharing best practices, networking with other food policy groups and leaders, and developing and providing food policy resource materials. If you're not familiar with the Food Policy Networks Project, I encourage you to check out our website and to sign up for our listserv to hear about future webinars hosted by FPN. We're pleased to welcome June and Yas June Holly and Yasmin Jonas today to lead us through these workshops. And this is the first of four workshops that we'll be hosting in this series. So June Holly has been weaving economic and community networks for over 35 years. After 20 years as executive director of the Appalachian Center for Economic Networks, June stepped down to devote her energies to helping communities around the globe form intentional collaborative networks by training and supporting network weavers. Her recent projects have involved communities, regions, statewide collaborations, healthcare and hospital systems, and national learning and innovation networks. Yasmin Jonas is a writer and editor with a background in human rights, human rights advocacy, foreign policy, immigration and refugee rights, and children's rights issues. Yasmin is currently the program manager at Movement Net Lab in New York, where she supports a team of six facilitators in their training of six networks, five networks working in the Chesapeake Bay region and a network of funders. So I also just wanted to give a brief overview to Zoom. We're assuming most people are familiar with Zoom, but if you're not, we're using a Zoom meeting platform today. So at the time, all um, attendees are muted and we'll keep you in listen only mode unless we have specific questions to ask you. Um, and then we'll eventually be breaking out into Zoom rooms, which are basically virtual breakout groups um, where you can have small group discussions. And so that's why we would like everyone to participate with their video um, feature on their computer if they have that or to log in through a cell phone if possible. We can troubleshoot with you if you need to. Um, June has also incorporated some polls and open-ended questions throughout the workshop, which she'll lead you through. And finally, we'll be recording the group portion of the workshops today. So not the individual breakout rooms, but just the group presentation part. And we'll send out that link to the video and the PDF of the slides afterwards. So thanks everyone. And June and Yasmin, you can take it from here. Great. June, would you like me to just go ahead and do the full present mode? Present mode. Try yeah. it, try it in the full, yeah. I, yeah, I can. yeah, there. I think as long as you go up to view options, exit full screen, it looks really nice and you can see everybody else too. Um, okay. I think I'll just do, yeah, I'll do present. Yeah, that looks good. It okay. looks really great. good. Huh? Okay, great. Just tell me when to move. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay. 
Today, uh, we're going to be talking about structure, governance, and decision-making in networks, uh, giving you some new options on that. Uh, so you're going to do this one? Yeah. Me? So um, the purpose of this session, so we're going to be talking about some options for what your networks can be like in terms of structure. Um, there's a diversity of structures for networks, and we're going to be exploring those today. And we're going to also explore whether any of these options make sense for your network um, in terms of what you do, your, your, your size, and things like that. And then also we're going to give examples of small experiments you can try. Uh, these are tangible things that you can do between now and the next session. And then also we're going to give you a chance to use Zoom in breakout rooms if you haven't tried um, before. And breakout rooms are really great ways to get to know each other and then also to talk out um, some of these ideas. Um, and then in terms of our agenda, so we're going to do uh, take a survey um, soon after this, to figure out what kind of structure and decision making does your network have. So you'll get to see not just for your own self, but also uh, your peers in the session um, and learn from them. Um, and then we're going to hear about some new options in terms of network structures from June. Um, after that, we'll get a chance to digest this information in breakout rooms, like I said before. And these are really fun, and I hope you guys uh, uh, enjoy them. And then we'll come back together. Uh, we'll do that twice, and then we'll come back together uh, in between and talk about how to experiment with these new approaches. So not only will you get to learn about these structures and decision-making systems, but we'll also uh, brainstorm together. Um, and here is the survey. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I am going to put that link mm -hmm. in the chat. And um, basically, oh, why isn't it? Let me do this. Okay, there it is. Okay, so there's a link in the chat. And all you have to do is click on it. We've got about 10 questions or something. And then as you click on it, I'm going to be sharing the screen so you can see all the answers so we can get a sense ourselves of what kind of structures we have in place now. Uh, so just go ahead. If anybody has problems, let me know. But just click on the link in the Zoom and take the survey. And you can let me know, um, you know, in the chat when you're done. Um, and let's see, this isn't what I want to do. Do, do you have the right link? Are, are people getting the right link? Are they getting a link with, that's taking them to a survey, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm on it myself. Okay, great. Um, so we'll get to see in real time what kind of structure and governance decision making that you guys have. And I'm going to start right now. I'm going to share the screen here in just a second. I'll shut up too so you can concentrate. Yes, I mean, are you seeing the one that? Here, do I have... Oh, it should. You should be. Um, it should be in your Google Docs. Your Google. No, but do you, can you see it? I'm sharing it. But do you see something? Yeah. Okay. I great. have. We have it in the chat. Okay, great. And if anyone but... has a problem, let me. Okay, we're getting lots of answers in here. I'll keep refreshing it. Uh, we have eleven responses so far, and we'll be able to go through and. I'll look at these as they come in. Let's try to get a few more here. And if you're seeing the full screen, you can go all the way up and to view options next to that green and go to uh, exit full screen. You'll see the chat and also June's uh, responses. Okay, let's see how many have taken it now. 18. Uh, let's just wait another minute. If anybody uh, needs a little more time there. Okay, people are still in progress. Okay, let's try one more time and then we'll... Uh, just reshare the link. Uh, Del Myers asked for the link again. It's in the links is in the chat. Yep, just sent it. Okay, you're seeing a, a graph right on the screen. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, you seen the graph. Okay, great. Okay, one more time, and then we're gonna. You can keep filling it out uh, because we'll send this to you later. But it looks like uh, um, twenty-eight people have. How many do we have on the call? Well, some of us haven't taken it. So I think this is pretty good. Okay, so let's go down and look and see what kind of decision making. Wow, do we have a lot of different um, types. So we seems like we have uh, a, a good chunk of people who are uh, nonprofits, 501c3s or such. We have people housed in another nonprofit. Another large group is... Uh, a food policy council convener, um, and let's see, we have quite a few statewide food policy councils. Um, so, it, you know, it seems like people have a quite a variety of different forms that they are taking. I don't know if anybody said that they aren't structured at all. Um, I, I can't remember if that was an option. Okay, let's let's see your current organizational. Uh, structure so we have uh people who have uh, a core council standing committees paid staff uh, and then a lot of so we have a tremendous variety of forms and that's what i've seen too that you know there's a lot of different forms that networks are taking in their structure if you consider yourself part of a network um which best describes you and it looks like most groups don't have membership which I actually think is a good thing. Um, membership, but it doesn't cost, is the second other ones. Uh, so we only have one group that has paid membership. Um, current decision-making uh, structure, and uh, we have quite a few groups where staff are making all the decisions. Um, and uh, another big chunk of people who have a coordinating group who is ma making the decisions. Oh, that's really fascinating. And then several other that have a uh, governing board. Uh, you'll have, uh, that is self-selected or volunteers and uh, just 9.5% actually vote uh, on their, uh, for their board. Uh, Decision-making processes, some groups make decisions by consensus. Um, some are using consent. I bet a lot of you are in, in North Carolina have worked with uh, Tracy Kungler. Uh, some are using Robert's Rules. Quite a few are using the advice process. Ooh, I wanna hear about people who are using it. I, oh no, that's maybe the, yeah. And, and then we have a bunch of other options. We'll be sending you this so you can kind of look and see what other groups are doing. Who makes decisions? In most cases, board and staff make almost all the decisions. Um, in some cases, membership uh, or network participants are involved and uh, others have circles who are making decisions. And if you are using circles, I really want to hear about it because I think all of us need to know who's actually doing some of this out there. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing, but uh, pretty interesting. And we can kind of keep in mind this tremendous variety that we have that we can learn from. You know, we can learn from each other what we're doing, what's working, um, and what's not. So Yasmin, do you want to go ahead and share the screen again? Yep, and then I will go on present. Okay. Okay, that looks lovely. That's lovely. Okay, so now I'm going to talk. I'm going to kind of fire hose you here for a good, um, and with some new thinking about governance, maybe for some of you who are already practicing this, but um, I'm going to try to just present some new ideas um, in uh, governance. And so governance, it's step back and think. It's about who's making decisions about what and how are those decisions being made. Next slide. And so, you know, most governance out there in the world is this kind where you have, you know, corporations, representative democracy, uh, Congress, whatever, nonprofits, they usually in them either boards or senior management, or it might be, you know, Congress or whatever, they are making the decisions and they have the power and control to make the rules. Next slide. Now, the, this is really becoming an urgent issue uh, for all parts of our life because, 
you know, how governance works in our life is about power and control. And it's about who's creating the world around us. So it's really important that we spend time, you know, because if we want to create a healthy world, we need to really look at this unequal power and control and think, aren't there some other options? Next slide. So, you know, when we think about our values as networks, you know, what we, we want, and, and uh, you know, I might actually, uh, you know, another time survey you about this, but I'll bet that most of you want more participation by those in, in your network to be more responsive to needs and interests as they arrive, be more peer-based than hierarchical. So people are really collaborating together, uh, engaging the energy of network participants. In a lot of networks, just a few people do almost all the work. How can we shift that so more people can be engaged and initiate action? And how can this all be more fun? We desperately need more fun these days, right? So. Next slide. So if we think about it from that perspective, you know, here we are. And first, I'm going to say there's no right or wrongs here. We're all experimenting. We're doing the best we can. I'm not trying to say that anybody's wrong for having any, any uh, format at all. I'm just trying to suggest that we might play around and experiment with some new ways of governing. And so if you are a network that's a 501c3, you have to have a board uh, of some sorts and usually the staff who, uh, you know, again, are still trying to fit into this nonprofit format. Uh, so next one. But on the other hand, oops, no, I think we skipped. Do we skip a slide? Um, just hit it once. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So you're right. It was. I was thinking there's, I should have printed these all out. Thank you, Yasmin. Okay. Next slide. And since some of, some, of, some of you have very little formal structure or your council or coalition, and so you have this small group that are making decisions, but there's this whole network of people who are impacted by your work, who care about healthy food and healthy communities and equity. Um, and, and so, you know, uh, um, next slide. So we need to really look at some alternatives. So a couple of years ago, I started really looking at them. And I started with this because it's important to remember, even though we sometimes use the word network as an organizational form, really networks, you know, at their core are about relationships and the patterns that those sets of relationships make. And another colleague and I looked at hundreds and hundreds of really successful networks that were trying to shift system, like most of you are trying to shift the food systems uh, so that they're healthier and more equitable. And uh, when you're trying to shift a system, not just tinker with things, you need this kind of a network. And this network has all this diversity in its core. People know each other, um, but they're coming from different backgrounds. Um, and the most important thing about this is that it is self-organized, that the ones that are shifting systems are what we call self-organized. And that means anybody in that network can get an idea for change pull some other people together and make something happen and then share what they learn with the rest of the rest of the network. And so I thought, well, how could we have that same, and lots of people are organizing their, their food work that way. Hey, let's get a project on community gardens. Let's find out who, who wants to be involved in that. And let's work on that together. But people hadn't until very recently started thinking that there's new ways that we can apply this to governance and the operations of networks as well. Next slide. So we're going to take all three structure, governance, and decision making and talk about them, some new possibilities. So next slide. So lots of networks now are, are doing, this is almost like a negative. They're not structured as nonprofits. Um, you know, if you are, there are things you can do to make that not slow you down and inhibit you. You can use a fiduciary agent, and I think some of you are doing that. You know, a tax exempt nonprofit, you run your funds through that, and all you have to do is continue your charitable work, and it 
and, and nobody that I know has had problems with that. So these kinds of groups don't have formal governing boards. They don't have formal membership because they want to keep growing and growing, but they do align around values and purpose and focus. And I think that that's something that we could talk about in, an, in one of our other sessions a little bit more. Next slide. But if you think of it, and some of you have seen this diagram, some of you haven't. This is about how a network develops, uh, to how you get to that system shifting. And that important piece is that one in the, in, uh, the third one from the, the left. And that is where you become a self-organizing network and where people are starting to get together and do work collaboratively. And people may be in a number of these different collaborations and the collaborations uh, dissipate when they're done, when they've done their project or work. But then usually there's reforming, constantly reforming as new issues and problems emerge in your community. Okay, so I wanna talk about how you can apply this to your governance. Next slide. Yeah, I see somebody says they have trouble with a fiscal agent. I'd love to do a training just on these fiscal, what I call fiscal agent lights. You have to really do research to find a good fiscal agent who's going to support you and not be a burden on you. And so, you know, that, that, that's a whole, I'd love for people to keep uh, putting uh, uh, comments in the, in the chat. So, Anyway, uh, about two years ago, this book, Reinventing Organizations Illustrated, came out, and it, it, it's talking about, uh, it gives lots of examples of what the, he calls, Lelou calls, teal organizations, and they organize all their work and their operations, you know, uh, uh, budgeting and uh, communications through what they call circles. Uh, and other people call them working groups and such. So I really recommend this book. Uh, just read the second half where it starts talking about teal, uh, but it's, it's not very expensive. And then uh, there's other sources that you can read to, to learn about these self-organizing models of governance and operations uh, that I'll have a whole slide on them a little bit later. But it really opened my mind to the possibilities. Next that there is a different way that we could organize. And so I've been experimenting the last two years with a, with a number, a handful of networks. And so far the results are being extraordinarily positive. The new structure is circles, okay? Or you can call them what you want. Some call them even open committees. But the idea is that as a need emerges in your network, uh, for something to be done, like to get develop a brand for your council or whatever, a small group forms, they address that need. Anyone can start, it's, but it's a small chunk. So to get like a brand or to get a newsletter, you may have to meet three times. And that's what most network participants can do. Uh, they can meet for short periods of time, but they don't have a lot of other time because they have a, another job out there. Um, so next slide. But here's a Zappos, who if many of you know the shoe company, is completely uh, organized through these kinds of circles. And of course, it's got thousands and thousands of employees, <laughs> and, but they, and they're still, it's got circles within circles. But these circles come and go as they're needed, and they keep it very innovative, very dynamic. And uh, even they ended up kicking out uh, any managers who didn't want to give up being managers. Um, there, there's a lot of brouhaha about that, uh, but they've been very successful in implementing uh, this strategy. And I've got a Harvard Business Review article that's really pretty interesting, worth reading. Next slide. And so here's a resonance network coming out of uh, uh, the movement to end violence against women and girls and now they're building a new network and they are doing this circle strategy um, and they have created a catalyst uh, group that's replacing sort of a governance group and they're starting a set of uh, circles to do their network operations. Next slide. So ask questions. Um, okay, uh, so 
uh, how it works is that this, imagine your governing group, instead of just meeting together and trying to deal with everything itself, spends most of its time kind of scanning, oh, what do we need? Oh, we need a new, um, you know, we need a new web page or whatever. And they then help find from among all the net network participants, they help find a set of people who are really excited about that to move that forward. Next, this doesn't mean that staff don't get to do any work. They just still are going to end up, you know, doing work. But uh, you can get a lot more people involved in each one of these. If, if, as you form circles, you're reaching out to bring new people from your community in. Uh, it's a great idea. So, for example, one network uh, wanted to work on a brand. They had three large Zoom sessions. And see, with Zoom, it makes it really easy. You don't have to have people driving an hour to a meeting and whatever. You can just pop on, um, you know, your computer and have a really great great meeting and get a lot of work done. So they had these Zoom sessions uh, and got lots of input and people helped co-design their branding. But after three months, the process was done. That group disbanded. Um, Zoom training, uh, uh, this network has Zoom training as needed for to help people learn how to use Zoom and breakout rooms and when they did a, a web page. And so you see they're breaking off little chunks that make it easy for people to participate in. Next slide. And even when you think about a circle, it's not just like five people are gonna do everything. They usually have a set of experts, uh, consultants or whatever, people with specialization. They might even have somebody from another community or another state who knows about this, who can tell them their experience. Everybody doesn't have to come to every meeting either. They may just draw people in on an as needed basis. Next. You know, and this idea of co-design is really key. A lot of decisions in networks are just people creating something together. And once they're done creating, there it is. They don't have to have a formal decision-making process, though they might share it out with, with the larger network. Um, so in, in the resonance example, for, you know, so again, they have a, they have a communications uh, circle that is again kind of this catalyst so it's getting things like network branding and web page uh, uh, going so this new role that instead of trying to do everything yourself you keep pushing it out including others encouraging them to to come in um, okay next next slide so what this does is that usually what you're trying to do is chunk out your work into instead of having a committee that's you know requires several hours every month for the people involved you're chunking out okay we're going to have two to three hour and a half calls on this and then you're going to be to make a decision i mean to make a proposal and a decision and that's all you have to commit there you know you might commit to another project but you don't have these same long-term commitments so lots more people will join, it's a, in fact, it's proving to be a fabulous way to recruit new people into your network. Um, and it's a powerful way to develop new leadership. Next slide. Because one thing that we found is that, you know, it's really pay, it pays to have good facilitators. And some people are putting, making a small pool of funds to pay people very small stipends to facilitate and coordinate these. And, for example, the resonance is going to, is getting like a dozen um, facilitators together who can be called on to help facilitate these circles. And um, you know, we there's already like six circles that are waiting for their facilitators to really take off. Next slide. So instead of committees that are permanent and require this long-term commitment you have these circles that are often smaller chunks of work and just on an as-needed basis uh, as things arise but they do require really good communication systems like you have to people have to within the circle have to have really good ways of communicating and that's something that i think we're going to talk about in the self-organizing uh, uh, session that might be next um, and, and you have to be able to communicate to the whole, you know, your whole network. Next slide. 
Okay, so let's just talk real briefly and then we're gonna go into breakout rooms. Um, decision making. So the ways you make decisions can be by majority voting. Seems like some of you are doing that. Consensus, you know, more power to you if you have a group. But usually if you have a group that's really good at making consensus, they're probably too much alike and you probably don't have enough diversity in your group. Um, Consent, this is Tracy Kunkler, a circle forward, has done a lot of work on consent, and I'm gonna give you her some of that uh, information about her group. Um, people can block, but they have to suggest alternatives. Now, I'm particularly fond of advice because um, it's really light. It's like everybody can give input into a, a decision that's gonna impact them, but the circle makes the final decision. Um, and then there's, and I'm gonna talk about that more because I think it's so great for networks. Uh, and then co-design. Lots of people are involved collaboratively designing something and the process of designing is really a decision-making process. And I'll give you some more links about that too. Next slide. So uh, let's just talk a little about that. I love this advice because it's very quick and um, it, it, you can get lots of participation without a lot of pain and cost. So next slide. So here's the, here's the advice process and then you'll get these slides so you can follow this. But you, know, you invite anybody to a circle who, who cares about this uh, particular issue and with something like Zoom, you know, you can have quite a few people, put them in breakout rooms, can be part of a circle. Uh, you draft a proposal, you, you know, you might have several co-design groups, uh, meetings, uh, but then you finally get a, a draft proposal, you set it, send it out to everybody that's gonna get affected, but you say, you have to get us feedback in two days or three days. So people get feedback, you try to incorporate it, but some things you may have to, you know, may, may be very controversial and you say, okay, we did the best we can, but we're gonna, so we're gonna try this out, but because it was controversial in three months, we're gonna check in about it and see how it's working. But it's this idea that decisions are experimental. They're not, you know, they're not made in stone. Um, and, and so you can really do that with this kind of a, a process. Next slide. Okay, so we got, you know, network structure that lots of people are going with intentional. Uh, they're being intentional by clarifying the purpose and alignment, but they're informal. They have a governance structure where they have a catalyst circle plus these constantly emerging other circles. And um, they have decision-making using co-design advice and or consent. Uh, so those are just some of the experiments that are happening out there. And I really want to uh, have some of you um, uh, in the chat sharing uh, if you've done some of this. Okay, so um, you going to set up the breakout rooms now, Yasmin? Uh, you, uh, you... Oh, no, I mean, I'm setting up the breakout rooms. You, you're going to tell them what to do, though, right? <laughs> yes. So uh, actually, so I'll do this. Um, so we're gonna go into breakout rooms. June is gonna put you in there. You don't have to do anything, but stay on. Um, but we're gonna talk about uh, uh, whether anyone is trying this. So actually, before we do that, I really encourage folks, um, we're gonna put a, in the link, uh, June is gonna put the Google Doc form, uh, Google Doc, you'll click on that. It'll have the questions uh, that you're seeing here. Um, and I encourage folks to uh, choose both a note taker and then someone else to help be a facilitator to help push along the conversation. How long will they have, June? Oh boy, we bet. Uh, well, let's assume we'll we'll send you a note when we figure out exactly. But it's supposed to be about fifteen minutes. Let's. Uh, uh, Yasmin and I will check that out, and we'll you'll see a little note popping up, and yeah. we give you one minute warning. Uh, do take time to introduce yourselves to each other, but you know, again. Um, the facilitator should help you keep mo keep moving along. Okay, you're gonna have four or five participants per room. I'm gonna create the breakout room. You have to click on a little box that says, do you wanna join? And then before you go in, you'll wanna click on this link in the chat because that's where you're gonna take notes. And um, 
um, just, you know, to make sure somebody is taking notes in that, in that document. You know, it could be a couple people if you're really good at collaboration. And we'll give you a, a one minute warning. It has the questions that you're going to answer, okay? And then also, June, one thing is that um, it'll say you're going to group one or two or three. So that's the, the area that you'll go to that plate positioning uh, or page on the Google Doc. So you'll write notes in group, whatever group you're in. Okay. Quick question, June. Um, yes. Michael Dahl has asked, what does trying this mean? in reference to the breakout room questions. Oh, the question. Oh, are you, are you doing, how, is that more clear? Are you doing any, I think that was one of the questions. Are you doing any of these practices that, that I described? June, and, do you want me to join a breakout room? You're putting me in one. Uh, uh, no, don't, don't join it right now. Okay, great. So you click on and then go ahead and start. Okay, uh, yes, I mean, that's just great. Uh, Oh, okay. Yasmin, are you going to share screen again and we can debrief? Yeah. Uh, just uh, go ahead and start sharing. You didn't get very far. Well, you are going to have another 10 minutes at least together. But isn't it, aren't the breakout rooms a delightful thing where you can really, you know, get a, a, into a conversation? Uh, so if you'd be willing to share in the chat any insights that you got, um, and if some of you are, again, you might want to go up to the top and say exit full screen so that you can see uh, everyone again. Um, but if you would share, we've got some great sharing in the chat. We're going to be sending this chat. Uh, one thing you should know is that there's a little thing that says more down at the bottom right hand corner. If you click on that, it says save chat. And it will save the chat to your desktop. It's just a small file. And you can have instant access to all these links. I know Marcus Hill spent a bunch of time here talking about what uh, they're doing in North Carolina, some really interesting kinds of stuff. And, um, you know, um, so anyway, great. Okay, so Erin says somebody in her group had a great variety of structures. If you would put in the chat, go ahead and share with us a little bit what you learned and what, what uh, insights you got, what new friends you made. Uh, so just go ahead and take a minute to write something in, in the chat, a quick uh, personal or group report back. Great, uh, great, okay. So we have a lot of, uh, yeah, oh, Peer Assist. I'll, I'll send a link to a Peer Assist. It's a wonderful process. And yeah, if any of you are getting into this, you probably wanna connect with other people because, um, you know, there's a lot to learn. You've got to be constantly learning how to do these new things. It's not like it's a recipe that you can just take out the cookbook and <laughs> bake up a cake. Uh, you've got to be constantly learning what you're doing. Okay. Um, we lost that, that one. Are you going to do present again? Okay. So let's go to the next part, which, I mean, this is just giving you a tasting of this. You're going to have to do some reading, learning, maybe talk to some of the people. If any of you who are already doing some kind of circle activity uh, are already doing that, if you're willing to, you know, have somebody call you up, put your email in the, in the chat and, uh, uh, so other people can could maybe just call you up uh, and find out a little bit about what you're doing. Okay, so now somebody like think I think Tina was saying, well, do these just evolve naturally, or is there some process to go through? And I think the best thing is to take an experimental approach to this. Next, uh, next slide. Okay, so there's three things you can do. You can do all of them, none of them, one, two, whatever. And the first one is to really start learning more about this and check your own organization's readiness. We're gonna go into each one of these a little bit more. You're, you can do a circle experiment and we'll suggest some that you can do. 
Um, and then you might, if you're doing a circle experiment, you might want to get uh, the self-organizing toolkit, which um, is on the page. I want you to all uh, go to networkweaver.com and up in the upper corner, you can um, sign up for the newsletter, which has comes out once a week and it's got great blog posts. There's also tons and tons, like I think it's up to 10 free things on that. Uh, that you and one of them is the self-organizing toolkit. Uh, so you might want to check on, click on that link. Um, yeah. Okay, Christy and, and cooperatives. Uh, we'll get to the, some of these questions. If uh, I'll try to an answer them during the next breakout room. So the third thing is to do an experiment and advice decision making. Next slide. So let's go over these. So the first thing for learning more, I really encourage you to pass around and get that book, Reinventing Organizations. Make sure you get the illustrated version. The other one has way too many words for the 21st century. Uh, and you can share this video in the PowerPoint with your board governing group, whatever, and talk about it. Find out more about Circle Forward. Uh, and you can get the, uh, especially on the networkweaver.com blog post, there's a lot, there's four posts on co-design, which I put the links in here uh, in the next slide. So next slide. Uh, so there's a whole bunch you can read about different self-organizing models. Maybe you can create a little circle to read and learn some of these. Uh, there's a really interesting platform called Lumio uh, for decision making. You might want to check that out. And then I put the links to the co-design um, blog posts that are, are kind of interesting. Next, next one. Um, so one thing, and I'd love to think about, hey, do state food policy networks want to become more experts in um, this kind of governance. It might be something that, you know, we, we do uh, more sessions on uh, just how you can learn uh, more about this so that you can ha really help the, the local uh, policy councils um, uh, experiment with this more. Next slide. So the next thing is to do, you, you know, you can do a readiness checklist. And, and one, I think the most important piece of readiness is that you have to have a good communication system. So maybe most of you have group email, but then, you know, everybody knowing Zoom and how to use that uh, is really important. Zoom is very cheap, $150 a year, and you can kind of share the password and stuff. And working with Google Docs uh, to work on proposals uh, collaboratively is is probably really important thing and so if you don't have those in place you need to figure out how to learn that next one then you can figure out a small thing to I think start small like you know like uh, one group they were gonna plan a get an annual gathering but they decided hey anybody who wants to help us come and get on a zoom session and we'll plan it together. They had 40 people on a, on a couple of different calls, at least 40 people, and who were, went into breakout rooms, put down ideas, gave feedback on things. A great way to get participation. Um, I, it, I mentioned that one about designing a brand, but you could do one on just organizing a Zoom and Google Docs training, newsletter design. Why don't you, uh, maybe people can suggest some other simple things that you could start trying and seeing how this circle stuff works. Next, next slide. Uh, then, you know, with or without a circle, you know, you can try decision making with advice. I mean, the consent one's a little bit harder. You, you probably want to get Tracy to help you with that. But uh, using that one slide that, that I showed you about the process, you know, you could find something you need to make a decision about, like whether you should have a gathering or what are your priorities. Have a Zoom session to explain the, the process to as many people in your network as possible and then get some input and feedback on that, craft a proposal and share out the, the final result. Um, so another easy thing that you could do just to try this out, something different from the same old, same old. And it really is, is empowering, increases participation and gets a lot more things done once you can get it rolling. Okay, next. So now you're going to have about, I think, oh, let's see, ooh, 
we're doing great on time. I did so that so quickly. So you're going to get another uh, 15 minutes in your group uh, where you're going to get a chance to answer that. I'll put the link in again. Um, and here we'll get the link here. Uh, let me just grab that. Again, you'll want to click on this link before you go into your uh, uh, breakout rooms. And we're going to go in the same room so you don't have to spend time introducing yourself. And you're going to talk about, like, you know, who in your current group or board would be open to learning more? Could you create a little learning thing? Another one is what ideas do you have for experimenting with a circle? Um, what, and maybe if some of you have already done this, you might just act as a mentor to some of the others. What decision or action do you need to make soon that could become more participative? So I'm gonna go ahead and put you in those same breakout rooms, um, and, uh, but make sure that you click on here again, get a note taker, and um, we'll, be, we'll get you back in, um, oh, it'll probably be, I'll tell you, but it'll be about, uh, 12 to 15 minutes. Uh, I'll do the math and figure it out. Okay. I totally apologize. I was trying to hit the breakout room and breakout rooms and I ended up ending the meeting. It's Clicked okay. on the wrong button. You just disappear in a puff of smoke. Um, uh, oh boy. Well, anyway, we will, we'll give you the chat there, but we wanted to, while we're waiting for people to go on, uh, let's, let's hear what you talked about in your chat. What, what did you decide that you might want to try to do? Or what questions do you still have? So if you could, I think we're small enough that we can just take off our uh, mics and share with each other. What are you thinking about doing? But if you're uh, a, a little more shy, go ahead and write in the chat. So what are you thinking about doing? So, uh I'm a Vista creating an entirely new food council. Ooh. Yeah, for Erie PA. So it would be pretty easy for me to start at the beginning. I mean, right now the hardest sell is starting a new organization takes so much time. And there, there are so few people that are really passionate about this. And they're all so busy. You know, anytime anything food related comes up, they're the first to be asked. And now it's just another thing. So being able to say we can separate into smaller groups, do work, and then disband will be very appealing to the group. Great, great. How about someone else? This is great. And there's somebody want to volunteer to help Lauren, maybe have just a quick call about who started a, a, a food council. That would be great. If you would put an email in the chat. and Absolutely. Just a half an hour, hour call could help her, her job become so much easier. And like yeah. what? So if it's somebody's willing, oh, that'd be really wonderful. Yeah. Okay. I don't what know else? if she's back on, but that's exactly what a peer assist is. So she had a question about what a peer assist is. And I did put the link in the chat, but we'll, uh, again, you'll be able to, we'll send you that chat because um, somewhere it downloaded. <laughs> and we'll, we'll find it because it was so full of really great experience. Um, Okay, so there's Lauren's email. So if you're willing, uh, you could either take that email, send her a message, or uh, just put your email in the, in the chat. Um, yeah, here, there's, there's somebody with a suggestion there. Okay, so what else are people going to try? Logan, do you want to talk about the things that came up in your group? All kinds of muted. Um, sure. Let me pull our group up. So we had, uh, and Lauren was in my group. So a lot of, a lot of what we were talking about was kind of starting from the ground floor, but there are also just a lot of projects coming on strategic plans and funding decisions, decisions about how, how to allocate grant funds to councils. And all of those can use more participation on pretty much every level. So there were just a lot of discussions about how to make those into a larger discussion. I said discussion a lot. 
Yeah, and using a Google Doc and at least having comments, like you put up an idea for a proposal and then putting com you know, having people put in comments works really well to engage people in the proposal. Or, you know, if you feel like, you know, you've got enough trust, you can just have it edit. Everybody gets in there and writes the proposal and the results often can be stupendous. It's just that collective intelligence is real. <laughs> Um, okay, anybody else? Let's have another share. Uh, June, I will. Um, we're in the middle of changing our structure, and so you know, we're trying to turn it from like a core task force group to like a shared leadership of a, of a core group. We have 25 of community leaders. And really, I like the, the term circles, and we, at our last meeting, that's exactly what's happening. We just let people bubble up, figure out what issues were important and let them take charge of it. And I like the idea because I think that's a better concept than work groups or breakout groups because then you feel like your task. This one feels like, <laughs> you, yeah. yeah. I mean, it feels like a burden. This feels like more like we do it as we need, get whatever task we need to get accomplished and then, um, and then you know, just dissolve when needed. And the other thing, too, is we had a task force group, and the question was whether or not we would remain the driver group. And I like the term catalyst, because we are the ones that are looking for funding and support. And I feel like we're still leading, but I like the term catalyst better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and one thing you can do if people are willing to, like, let's say you have three or four groups that little circles that could go in, you can have them meet even weekly for a half an hour Zoom call to just say, hey, what challenges have you had? And that's where that peer assist process that we'll send you is so okay. very useful. So you, they, because you're trying to build new leadership. Yes. And it, there's a whole skill set to being a leader. It's not really about you know, you know, your own powerful presence. It's about learning things that help you make something successful, help other people be successful. So, yeah. how about and we are adopting Zoom, thanks to your. Um, oh yeah, my 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 missionary approach. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, it, Zoom can really make a difference for you. Okay, I think we. Uh, do you want to share the last couple of slides there, Yasmin? And we'll. Um, uh, so Zoom, it just is $150 a year for one license that you can use as much as you want. I probably have make five Zoom calls a day. Um, and, you know, it's something that you can actually share by sharing, you know, the email and stuff. Okay, so we got some good share back. Let's take the next one. Again, you might want to go up to uh, exit full screen there so you can see this a little better. Okay, um, who's going to... That's me. Great. Okay, great. <laughs> so um, I want to say first thank you to June and Yasmin for this webinar and uh, for doing these workshop series. This is the first of four. Um, so we will be hosting three more sessions with the June and Yasmin. Um, each of them will be an hour and a half where we'll dive more into um, decision making and communication. Um, and we're going to do a survey at the end that asks you kind of what other information you'd like us to cover in the, the workshops coming up. Um, we encourage you all to please register for the other webinars um, so that you are uh, get as much information out of them in our time with June and Yasmin as possible. Um, and they will continue in December, January, and February. So they're spread out a little bit so you can go and try some of these techniques um, with your groups and councils in the meantime. And then also, Another part of this is um, we are working with June and Yasmin to do individual one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Um, so, and this is really, we're gearing this towards any state food policy councils or state food policy networks. If you want time one-on-one -on -one with June and Yasmin, we ask you to um, please attend all of the workshop series, have one or two people from your council try to attend them, um, as well as um, we want at least two to five members of each council or network to um, to attend the coaching session with June and Yasmin. We have a, an application um, for people to fill out and then we will be selecting um, groups to take time um, and really get to kind of work through issues, individual issues to your council. We'll chat the link to the, the survey um, or the application in the chat box. Thank you. Great. Next slide. Let's see. 
Okay, so we're going to just ask you to take a very short survey and I'm going to go grab the link here. And it uh, is both to help us pick topics for next time. We'll see. That's how we pick this topic because a lot of people expressed interest in this. And uh, so here is the, here's the one for the, um, there, the very last one is the survey and it should just take you a few minutes and it's so helpful. So just please share uh, with us. I think there's room for you to just share just about anything you want to about this. Uh, you know, what do you still need? What information do you still need? Uh, and, and that's it for today. Uh, well, we're going to end on time. I think somebody's going to say a uh, thanks and we are going to send the links. I'm, I'm going to find that somewhere. Maybe you all get the, the chat. We'll send you the chat uh, or link to the chat and the video and the PowerPoint. Um, I'll make sure you have access to that. Um, and we loved having you here. Great group. Fabulous, fabulous information sh sharing in the chat, which I really encourage everybody to read. Um, you know, after this session, because lots of great resources about what people are doing, um, you know, and you might want to try to look some of these folks up. I think, um, you know, people just say no if somebody asks you and you don't have any time. But I think sharing what you're doing, helping others along is a really par important part of how networks work. So uh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, and um, Wish you all well, and if you ha just finish that, make sure you get the survey in the chat. Just stay on and, and finish up that survey, and we'll hang around if you have a question or two here for a second, if you have one before you go. Thanks, June and Yasmin. We really appreciate your time. Well, it's great to be here with all of you. <laughs> Conversations. Uh, June, someone's asking about Zoom calls. I think it's around 160. How much is it a year? I think it's 150. Somebody said they got theirs for 90. So maybe there's some deals out there. Anyway, it, it, it's, it's not very much considering how, yeah, how much you, how valuable it is to use. And the breakout rooms are unbelievably easy to set up. You just click on there. You know, if you're host, there's a little box down at the bottom. You click on that and you just, figure how many groups you want. It tells you how many participants, whether you want to do it just randomly, which is what we did, or you can also, if you have topics, you can actually just drag people into different groups. Super easy to do, uh, even if some people like me press the wrong button and, and the meeting instead of the breakout rooms. <laughs> um, but really, they're very easy to use. And you can get so much work done you can see how much, like you, I don't know if all of you took notes in the Google Doc, but it's a great way you can have people work on projects, proposals, whatever, and they come, go into their breakout room and really get some work done. Uh, it's almost like it's easier to focus when you're online like this than in a face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, and if you have any last questions, just, shout them out or write in the chat while we're waiting for everybody. I know it's. The work you're doing is really, really important. I feel like the whole food systems thing is just the leading edge of networks. And you may feel like you're struggling, but I'm telling you, your models for everybody out there mm -hmm. and doing really, really important work in mobilizing people to change food systems. And Lauren, I bet there's tons of people out there who really care about food systems. You got to find them like young people. You know, I think, I think people even under 18 uh, <laughs> or 18 are, you know, really do care about this stuff and it's just how do you find them that really is what it comes down to i have a group of probably 15 people that are really interested but they're just so busy um, right so you got to find to like find older people like well now i'm not a good example because i'm a little busy but um <laughs> lots of people who are retired my friends they're retiring what am i going to do I want a good project. So really, you know, find somebody who's retired and see if they might, you know, help you 
you know, have a little, have a little uh, dinner party or something and potluck or something and, and try to talk to them about how important this work is. Absolutely. That so, sounds good to me. So, yeah. 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 Um. <laughs> okay. Just letting everybody have a chance to finish that up. Okay. Great. And I'll get you all the, the uh, usually what I do is take the survey results and put them in a PDF so everybody can kind of read them and, and see them. They can see what they said too. Uh, Great. So. Thanks, June. And I've also got the recording from the last chunk of the webinar. Workshop. So we'll have two little chunks. Have to. Uh, we can merge them and put them on YouTube. And then Oh, we'll you know what? I forgot to, oh, geez. I don't know. I'm a little tired today. I forgot to uh, click uh, pause on the... Oh, I was doing that. Yeah, I was did doing you, that. Did you do that? Oh, good. Oh, you. bless you. <laughs> like, oh, that's great. Yeah, I love people who are on it. <laughs> Next time we'll make you do the breakout room so I don't end the meeting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was going, where's that, where's that link? But you got the message out right away. So people, yeah, we all got it. That's great. That's great. Yeah, T Tina, did you know you weren't asking? Uh, was um, uh, oh, what's her name from North Carolina? Gabby, uh, Chris, Christine, Gabby, uh, I think, who was asking about co-op forms for councils. It'd be interesting to see if anybody's doing. But I think the less structure, the better. Um, Yes, you're going to, oh, yes, you're yes. going to totally, Dell, you will get a copy of the PowerPoint. And I should say, give that, I should put it right in here. Uh, let me just go out and grab that, uh, uh, and, and we'll, we'll put the link. out in the follow-up email. Do you, so. do, you have, do you have the link to the PowerPoint? Um, it's in the, the Google Drive folder, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, the, and the survey, let's see, yep. that, that other survey, let's see. Uh, Okay, he, here's just in case you don't have it. Here's the, yeah, it's, it's, it looks like you're on there. Yeah, I am pretty sure I have access to it. So we'll include that all in the email. Okay, and, and I'll get the uh, survey right now. Looks like people, some people are still taking it, but uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, it should be right in our uh, folder. Yep. It's right in there, right? Or did I put it? Uh, Feedback survey. Okay, great, great. Yeah, we got 19, so that's that's great. We'll leave that open a little bit, and then we can kind of see how the, uh, yeah, people, uh, the second and the next to last. It's just so hard to read. How to, uh, communication seems like a big one. Growing our network. Mm -hmm. Okay, that seems like great for, hmm. over half said they're very likely to do more learning and to talk to their governing board about that. That's great. Do an experiment. Awesome. Uh, people want more details. Hmm. Breakouts. Yes. Yeah, more prep, huh? Uh. Great. Oh, this is real fun. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to get the uh export as a PDF and then we could probably take off. I think everybody has the
Okay. Great. Uh, this and I will e I, I will email you the PDF of the results right now. Okay, everybody ready to say goodbye? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna Bye. end the meeting for real this time. <laughs> okay. Bye -bye. Take care. Have a wonderful week. <laughs>